In this video, we're going to do a max-min question in which we want to maximize the area of a rectangle inside of an ellipse. First of all, you might be thinking, what's an ellipse? Well, an ellipse is similar to a circle in some ways, but the um, it might be longer than it is tall, or it might be taller than it is long. For instance, uh, someone might casually refer to it as an oval. Um, there's a more precise definition, of course, but uh, we could use that for purposes of this question. And I want you to just uh, remember that if you get an ellipse question in this course, it'll be centered at the origin. And so your job will basically be to determine the intercepts. We know that x-intercepts occur when y is equal to 0. So um, in this case, that would mean that 4x squared plus 25 times 0 squared equals 100. So that would mean that 4x squared is equal to 100. x squared would be equal to 25. x would be equal to plus or minus 5. So we'd be able to see that we've got a uh, x-intercept at 5, 0, and another one at negative 5, 0. And similarly, our y-intercepts will occur at the points where x is equal to 0. So we would have uh, 4 times 0 squared plus 25 y squared equals 100. Uh, that would mean 25 y squared equal to 100. Uh, which would mean that y squared equaled 4, so y was equal to plus or minus 2, and we would have uh, 0, 2 up top, and 0, negative 2 down below. And this is the situation that we have. So we've drawn a better uh, version of it right there, and what we're doing is we're putting a rectangle inside and we're hoping that we can maximize the area. Now, what we're gonna do also is we are going to let X and Y refer to one of these points of intersection. Now that's pretty logical uh, because if we let X and Y refer to one of those points of intersection, we can use the relationship of the, uh, of the uh, rectangle because X and Y is a point on the rectangle. We can also use the relationship of the ellipse because X, Y is on the ellipse. So it makes sense to let x, y be one of the points on that intersect. Well, I'm going to specifically choose uh, the point that's in the first quadrant. And the reason I'm going to do that is that makes x and y both definitely positive values. That's pretty convenient, actually. So now um, I know that the area is of the rectangle, that's what we're trying to maximize, is going to equal length times width. Well, let's think about what the length is. I know this length right here up top, that half of that is equal to x because x is horizontally the distance from the y-axis. But I also know that this length on the other side of the y-axis will be equal to this length. And so the overall length will be double of that x-coordinate. So the overall length will be 2x. Similarly, I know that y uh, is this vertical distance right here, the distance above the x-axis, but due to symmetry, I know that the distance below the x-axis is the same as the distance above the x-axis, so overall the distance will be 2y, and I can say that the width of that rectangle is 2y. Now you might, I've had students at this point say, well, how do we know x and y are positive? because lengths have to be positive. How do we know that these are both positive values? And it goes back to what we said a minute ago. We chose x and y specifically to be the point in the first quadrant so that we would know x and y were positive so that we'd be able to plug them in the way we just did. So the area of this is going to be equal, the area of this rectangle is going to be equal to 2x times 2y, which can also be called 4xy. Okay? Now, we want to only have one variable here. We don't want it to be 4xy. We, we want to get y in terms of x. So um, how are we going to do that? Well, we know that 25y squared 
is equal to negative 4x squared plus 100. We get that from bringing that over to the other side. And so we can divide every single term by 25, and we get y squared equals negative 4 25ths x squared plus 100 over 25, which is 4. So that means y equals the square root of negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4. And again, we don't put a plus or minus in front because we know y is positive because we chose x, y to specifically be the point in the first quadrant, so they'd both be positive. Okay, so now that we have that, we can uh, go back to our equation for the area, and we can say that the area as a function of x is equal to 4x times that expression for y, which is the square root of negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4. In other words, uh, 4x times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 quantity to the exponent of 1 over 2. And what is the domain of x? Well, uh, keep in mind x and y has to be a point in the first quadrant which means x has to be a number in between 0 and 5. So we can say 0 less than x less than 5. Okay, so let's move to the next slide now that we've got that awesome formula. And we will uh, get to work on determining the derivative. So we've got um, area as a function of x is equal to 4x times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 raised to the exponent of 1 half. Okay, now, and this is our uh, rectangle, just as a refresher, x, y is this point up here, and we know that uh, 0 is less than x is less than 5. So we determine our derivative. Um, we're going to use the product rule here. Uh, we've got 4x times this quantity. So we're going to say derivative of the first times the second. Plus the first times derivative of the second. So to determine the derivative of this, uh, this expression here, we're going to use the chain rule. We're going to say 1 half times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the exponent negative 1 half and then times negative 8 25ths x because we have to don't forget using the chain rule multiply by the derivative of that quantity there so we've got 4x times a half which is 2x times negative 8 25ths x, so we get negative 16 25ths x squared. So we get 4 times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the 1 half, minus, as we just said a moment ago, 16 25ths x squared, times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the exponent negative a half. Now, if a prime of x is equal to 0, which we know it does, to, according to our algorithm, then I'm just going to go up a step here. Imagine if we put a 0 right here. Okay? If we put a 0 right there, then what we can do is just uh, add this expression to both sides, or what sometimes people say, bring it to the other side, and that whole thing would become positive. So we can say... 16 25ths x squared times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 quantity to the negative 1 half will equal 4 negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 quantity to the positive 1 half. Now, what we're going to do next is we're going to multiply both sides by negative 4 over 25 x squared plus 4 to the positive 1 half. 
When we multiply this expression, negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the negative a half by negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the positive a half, we have the same basis, so we um, add the exponents. Negative a half plus a half is 0, so we get that expression raised to the exponent 0, which equals 1. So when we do that, we end up with 16 25ths x squared on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, when we multiply negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the 1 half by itself, the exact same uh, expression, then we have powers with the same base being multiplied. We add the exponents. A half plus a half is 1. So we get negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4 to the 1. So on the right-hand side, in other words, we get this expression here. 4 times negative 4 25ths x squared plus 4. Okay, so we uh, go about um, our work. First thing we'll do is uh, uh, distribute the 4. We get negative 16 25ths x squared plus 16. If we add 16 25ths x squared to both sides, we can say 32 25ths x squared is equal to 16. What we can then do is divide both sides by 32 over 25, which is the same as saying determine 16 times 25 over 32. When we do that, we get 400 over 32, which is the same if we divide numerator and denominator by 16, it's the same as 25 over 2. So we've got x squared equals 25 over 2. That means x will be equal to plus or minus the square root of 25 over 2, which is plus or minus root 25 over root 2, which is plus or minus 5 over root 2. Uh, we can uh, rationalize the uh, that fraction, the denominator, by multiplying numerator and denominator both by the square root of 2. We get plus or minus 5 root 2 over 2. Now keep in mind that uh, we said quite a while ago that x and y were chosen specifically because x was going to be positive and y was going to be positive. So we know it's not plus or minus. So what we could have actually written this whole time is leave those plus or minuses out and just say x is equal to 5 root 2 over 2. Now, remember our domain was 0 less than x less than 5. So we have to make sure 5 root 2 over 2 is a number in between 0 and 5. In fact, it is. So now we're going to use three different uh, values for w. We can say a at 0 is going to equal um, 4 times 0 times negative 4 25ths. 0 squared plus 4 to the exponent 1 half. That whole thing equals 0. And similarly, if we let um, x equal 5, we'll get 4 times 5. Uh, and then we'll have negative 4 25ths 5 squared plus 4 raised to the exponent 1 half. That equals 0 as well. But in between... What we have is 5 root 2 over 2. Well, that's going to equal 4 times 5 root 2 over 2 times negative 4 25ths. And then we're going to have 5 root 2 over 2 quantity squared plus 4. And then we're going to... Um, raise that to the exponent of one half. So let's just imagine. Let's just determine first of all what is five root two over two to the exponent. Five root two over two to the exponent two. Well, 
um, 5 root 2 over 2 times 5 root 2 over 2. When we multiply uh, numerators, we get 25 root 4. And when we uh, multiply denominators, we get 4. So what we end up with is 25 times 2, which is 50, over 4, or in other words, 25 over 2. So we can, uh, coming back over here, we can say this is equal to 4 times 5 root 2 over 2 is the same as 20 root 2 over 2. And then in brackets, we can say negative 4 25ths times 25 over 2 plus 4 raised to the exponent 1 half. So 20 root 2 over 2 is the same as 10 root 2. Uh, negative 4 25ths times 25 over 2 is the same as uh, negative 100 over 50, which is negative 2, plus 4 to the exponent 1 half. That's the same as 10 root 2 times 2 to the exponent 1 half, which is equal to uh, 10 root 2 times root 2, which is 10 times 2, which is 20. So um, we see that if we let x equal 5 root 2 over 2, the area of the rectangle created is 20. Of our three options of 0, 0, or 20, 20 is the greatest option. So therefore, the maximum area of a rectangle in that ellipse is 20 units squared.